Hey everyone, my name is Christina and this video is on purine salvage deficiencies. Imagine you're on your emergency medicine rotation and a well-known patient is being triaged. He's a four-year-old boy coming in for a suspected acute gout attack. He has been seen in the ED several times for gout and is known to be aggressive. A few of his fingernails are bleeding and he has a healing wound on his forehead. A light bulb goes off in your head. This sounds like leash and ion syndrome. What is the cause of this disease and how do you treat it? We're going to be going over purine salvage deficiencies. In the next few slides, you should be able to 1. Understand the purine salvage pathway 2. Describe the different purine salvage deficiencies 3. Understand clinical significance and 4. Describe diagnosis and treatment options First, let's go over how nucleotides are broken down. For the Step 1 exam, it's most important to know how to break down purines. Do you recall what the main building blocks of a purine nucleotides are? To make purines, we start by adding hypoxanthine to PRPP, or phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate, in order to make IMP, which stands for Intermediate Ribonucleoside Monophosphate, though IMP is shorter. HGPRT, which stands for hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase, is an enzyme that catalyzes this reaction. A nice thing about biochemistry is that the enzyme names generally tell you what they do. So in this case, we're transferring a hypoxanthine onto a ribose that has a phosphate on it, which is PRPP. IMP can now be converted into either AMP or GMP. What about the G in HGPRT, which is guanine? HGPRT can do the same thing with guanine as it does with hypoxanthine to make GMP. You need a different enzyme to use with adenine to make AMP, which is APRT, or adenine phosphoribosyl transferase. Okay, so sometimes you don't have enough nucleotides and you want to make more, such in a cell that's rapidly dividing, but sometimes you have too many and you want to get rid of them. So how do we break these guys down? Let's start with GMP. GMP can be broken down into guanosine. Do you remember what the difference is between GMP, guanosine, and guanine? So here's GMP, which as the monophosphate in its name tells you, has one phosphate. It also has a sugar and a base. If we remove the phosphate, we're left with guanosine. And then if we remove the sugar, we're left with the guanine base. We can basically do the same thing to get hypoxanthine back from IMP through inosine. AMP doesn't get converted back to adenosine. Instead, it gets converted to hypoxanthine through the inosine intermediate. This requires the enzyme adenosine deaminase, or ADA, since we need to deaminate the adenosine to create the hypoxanthine base. So now that we've converted everything into hypoxanthine and guanine, we can now use the enzyme xanthine oxidase, depicted here as EXO, in order to convert them first into xanthine and then into uric acid. What happens to the uric acid? It's excreted in the urine. Now that we've got the whole pathway laid out, let's talk about what can go wrong. There are two main purine salvage deficiencies that you need to be aware of for your board exams. One is adenosine deaminase deficiency. What happens if you have a genetic deficiency in this enzyme? Well, if you don't have ADA, adenosine begins to accumulate. And as is often in the case in biochemical pathways, when you have a lot of product, it will inhibit the enzyme that's producing it, causing negative feedback. In this case, it inhibits ribonucleotide reductase. Remember what ribonucleotide reductase does? Easy, just look at the name. Ribonucleotide reductase reduces ribonucleotides, like in RNA, into deoxyribonucleotides, like in DNA, so it's required for the synthesis of all deoxyribonucleotides. Since it's inhibited in the case of ADA deficiency, nucleotides can't be produced, which mostly affects cells that need to divide a lot, such as those in the immune system. Since it's inhibited in the case of ADA deficiency, nucleotides can be produced which mostly affects cells that need to divide a lot, such as those in the immune system, causing lymphotoxicity. Therefore, patients who have ADA deficiency will have a low lymphocyte count and can also have SCID, or Severe Combined Immunodeficiency Disease. SCID is a B and T cell disorder that has two different inheritance patterns. SCID due to ADA deficiency is autosomal recessive in nature, while an X-link inheritance pattern is due to the defective interleukin-2 receptor gamma chain. 
It's important to keep these minor differences in check. Skid is also known as a bubble boy disease, which has been popularized in movies and many TV dramas. It results in failure to thrive, chronic diarrhea, and recurrent viral, bacterial, fungal, and protozoal infections. A classic sign is an absent thymic shadow on chest x-ray, which should be in this region here. Diagnosis usually occurs around a few months of age with the clinical presentation of recurrent infections. Screening for skid is gaining more popularity and is performed routinely in some states through PCR measurements of T-cell receptor concentrations. Screening can also be done if there's a family history of the disease. Treatment involves prophylactic antibiotic treatment, IVIG, and bone marrow transplant for curative measures. You should also make sure to avoid live vaccines in these individuals. The next high yield disease we'll be going over is leash 9 syndrome. This involves a deficiency in HGPRT. What happens if a patient is deficient in HGPRT? They won't be able to make GMP or IMP. Instead, the increased guanine and hypoxanthine will just be broken down into uric acid. And what happens when you have too much uric acid? An accumulation of uric acid causes hyperuricemia and gout, as well as renal stones and indirectly causes some neurological and behavioral problems, including intellectual disability, aggression, and self-mutilation, such as nail and lip biting, as well as head banging. And another classical board question is, what is the inheritance pattern of this disease? HGPRT is on the X chromosome, so this is an X-linked recessive disease. And you can remember that this gene is involved in purine salvage pathways using the mnemonic, he's got purine recovery trouble. The he part is convenient because as an X-linked recessive disorder, you almost always see it in boys. This is usually diagnosed clinically once a triad of uric acid overproduction, neurological dysfunction, and cognitive and behavioral disturbances occur together. Leash and eye syndrome should always be a differential when a child is engaging in aggressive, self-inflicting behaviors. Diagnostically, you could also do a urine test, which can show an elevated urate to creatinine ratio. Genetic testing for the HGPRT enzyme can be done, but it's not typically routinely performed. Alright, so how do we treat this? One commonly used drug is allopurinol, which inhibits xanthine oxidase. This will decrease the level of uric acid in the blood. Now here's an interesting pearl for you. Xanthine oxidase metabolizes normal purines. It can also metabolize drugs that mimic purines. One example is 6 mercaptopurine, And do you remember what that's used for? 6 mercaptopurine is an antineoplastic that is basically a modified purine, which binds to and inhibits enzymes that normally synthesize purines, thus inhibiting purine synthesis. It's used to treat leukemias and inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease. So let's say you have a patient with leash 9 syndrome who you're treating with allopurinol, and this patient is now also diagnosed with a neoplasm that needs to be treated with 6 mercaptopurine. What do you think would happen? Since xanthine oxidase normally metabolizes 6-mercaptopurine, but the allopurinol is inhibiting xanthine oxidase, the patient will not be able to metabolize 6-mercaptopurine as effectively, and therefore it needs a lower dose of this medication. Okay, let's move on to a quick flash quiz. What does adenosine deaminase deficiency cause? This causes skid which results in failure to thrive and recurrent infections. Recall that skid due to ADA deficiency has an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. Okay, so the bottom line, nucleotide acids are made from freed purine bases in the purine salvage pathway. The two main purine salvage deficiencies are ADA deficiency and leash nyan syndrome. ADA deficiency results in skid, failure to thrive, and an array of recurrent infections. Leash nyan syndrome causes gout, renal stones, intellectual disability, and many behavioral problems. That's all for purine salvage deficiencies. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a thumbs up.